Yo, honestly, I'm surprised, man. I was really skeptical going into it. I took a nice bite out of that. I mean, the flavors in there just go oh, yeah. crazy, man. I mean, with the garlic and the butter, seasoned to perfection, man. Chef, you knocked that out the park, oh, man. Yeah. What's up, everybody, and welcome to a historic episode of America's Best Restaurants. Today, we are in Emmitsburg, Maryland, as we are here at the historical Carriage House Inn. And there is so much history in this building that I can't wait to go inside and find out about. But I also can't wait to go inside, have some fun, and of course, get to the Eden. Now, he just told me you're gonna be making something I ain't never, ever even seen before. Yep. Chef, what's coming my way? All uh, right, you're getting a chef feature. We have the elk chop here. Um, it's already fabricated. Uh, okay. We've tied it to hold the juices in. All right. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna show y'all how to sear it. We're gonna base it with some herbs, uh, salt, pepper. Um, and and you guys have your own like herb garden here, right? Yes, uh, we'll, we'll tour that a little later. Uh, we got all kinds of herbs, uh, edible flowers uh, awesome. we grow here on property, and that goes into our uh, chef's creations as well. Nice, nice. Yep. All now, right, we'll get started. For the started. record, I've never had elk before, so this is going to be a new experience for me right here. Salt and pepper is all you need for this. Absolutely. So there can, we go. Stick you're going to have a super hot pan going. We're going to uh, sear this to lock the juices in. Um, if you don't sear this, it's very lean. Um, Kind of like a tenderloin. It's getting really crisp on top. That's where all the flavor is at. And here we go. He's about to dump some of that rosemary in there. That's going to give you all of that flavor. I love a good rosemary flavor. Right. Oh, man, you smell that rosemary. You smell that garlic. You smell that, that delicious meat cooked with that salt and pepper. As right now, he's basting it, getting all that flavor, all those juices to all combine and come together on top of that. And then we'll finish with butter. Gotta have butter. I'm a lover of butter, baby. What can I say? You want a nice looking bone instead of burnt spots all over it? Awesome, okay, um, cool. Chef, you just put some fruit on top of there. What was that and why? Uh, this is an orange marmalade. Oh, okay. Uh, just to cut that gamey taste out of uh, the venison. Okay. Uh, the elk. Um, this will cut it, cut that, and that's wow. uh, our dish right here. Look at that. Look at that. Look, he's showing off like a proud papa right there, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, you what are you try this? Here we go. This is rare cut. Oh, yeah. Beautiful looking texture. Flavor going to go crazy. I already know. Wow. Yo, honestly, I'm surprised, man. I was really skeptical going into it. I took a nice bite out of that. I mean, the flavors in there just go oh, yeah. crazy, man. I mean, with the garlic and the butter, seasoned to perfection, man. Chef, you knocked that out the park, oh, man. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you very much. All right, guys, so finally it's supper time as we're sitting here with the owner of the carriage house. I got Sharon right here. And then we have the manager of marketing and sales, Christy right over here. And of course we have two delectable dishes sitting right in front of me. And we're gonna get to those delectable dishes in a little bit, but first, correct me if I'm wrong, this place, um has some friends that visit here sometimes, oh, yes. am I correct? Yes, yep, <laughs> Let's all talk the about time. That just a little bit. Upstairs and downstairs, yes. We have lots of lots of ghosts, lots of entities wow, with us. Wow, that's wild. Yeah. And they're, but they're nice ghosts though, right? Oh, they're all nice, they're all friendly, yes. I'll be honest with you guys. Now, a lot of times people tell me that something's on it or they got ghosts or something like that. And I, I'm like, okay, buddy, whatever, you're crazy. Uh, no. I saw a silhouette. I'm sorry. I saw a silhouette. I don't care if y'all think I'm crazy or not. It was a fat guy that was sitting in the back. Teresa told me that's where he's usually at, and I was supposed to see him there, which means I'm not crazy. I know what I saw. <laughs> She's not lying. Really, they, they are apparitions here, but they're nice, so they don't, they're not going to bother you. They just like smelling food. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Enjoy the hospitality. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, what is the history of this? I mean, this house has been around since 1857. So yes. I got to imagine this place is just brimming with uh, historical context. See, I mean, I saw the plaque outside the door where um, like the department, the U.S., some U.S. department, you know, officially named this a historical site. Yes. This is part of the town of the historic site. It was Maxwell and Zimmerman's to start with a feed and grain um, business. And then it went to a broom factory. And then 
It was empty for quite a few years and used for tomato canning. Okay. Mount St. Mary's used it to can tomatoes that they grew, I guess, as a, uh, way, a means to make money. And um, then it became the White House in, in 1943, 1843. Mm -hmm. Okay, as a restaurant, it was changed to a restaurant and, and motel. Oh, wow. And yeah, a restaurant ever since. Yes, it has. <laughs> changed hands a few times, but yes, it has. You, currently being the owner, um, had a little bit of a journey to get to this point, am I correct? That's correct. I started as a server in 1994, and a few years later married the owner, and then when he passed away in 2018, I became the owner. Okay. I know this is a sensitive topic, but I feel like we can't tell the story of the restaurant without mentioning this, but you no, know, before um, Pop, as his name was, Yes, right? he knew, he was known as Pop, yes. Um, before he passed, his son was That's next correct. in line to yes. inherit the restaurant as well. Yes. Would you like to talk about it? Um, that was Red's, and um, he was an amazing, with networking, with the community and community service. And so he was, he's been, he's still missed. Yeah. Because he was um, very vibrant and um, wonderful manager. Absolutely. So, so he is missed, yes. You have an amazing story. So I know this place is meant to succeed for another 200 years, or however long 1857 was. That's, a, <laughs> that's almost 200 years ago. So, all right, but I think now it's time for me to do what everyone's been waiting for me to do. I think I'm going to tear into some of this food. Tell me what I'm looking at right here. Absolutely. This is our jumbo lump crab cake. This is our house feature. Um, okay. They serve it for lunch and dinner on a sandwich. This is a, a nice, uh, very popular for caterings as well. You know you ain't gonna come to Maryland and not get some crab cake. That's I right. mean, that's like going to Jersey or New York and not getting a slice of pizza. You're gonna get some yeah. crab cake when you come to Maryland, all right? So, like, keep that in mind. Now, do I like do I put it in this sauce right here? Is that how this goes? That's our that's our house tartar sauce. You okay. Can, yes. House tartar sauce. Yeah. I dip a little bit of that. All right. There's no shy of it's all crab meat, right? So you can really and just a dusting of Old Bay just to complement the crab meat and it's fresh and absolutely. Yeah. I don't taste really hardly if any fillers in there. No, like, there's that not. Is, yeah, no. I love that because yeah. a lot of times when you get the crab cake. You get nothing but like a bunch of filler where you're using like, you know, you know, breading or, or you know, a whole bunch of other different things that just kind of cakes it up a little bit, you know, yeah. save a couple dollars because crab ain't cheap. You know what I'm saying? But this is a full crab cake, 100 percent made out of crab and other authentic ingredients. That is definitely a dish. If you love crab cakes, if you love crab, definitely hop on this. That is a knockout for crab cakes, man. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Great yeah. job on that one. Yeah. Thank you. However, this is what I've been waiting to sink my teeth into. I'm not gonna force you guys to tell me what I'm looking at because I can tell y'all right off the rip. We are looking at the classic, an American classic, the prime rib. I mean, this is the daddy of steaks, okay? This is like the king of them all. I know it's technically not called a steak, but prime rib is a steak as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I get in there. That definitely slaps. <laughs> oh yeah. That absolutely slaps. That is a prime rib right there. That is an absolute home run. I'm taking another bite. I don't care. I know I'm working right now. I'm gonna take one more bite. Why? Because I can. Oh yeah. Let's get some horsey sauce in there. Horsey sauce on that side. All you on that side, because I'm fancy. <laughs> All together, there you go. Mm. Great job. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they did a good job. <laughs> nice slow roasted for tender and it, yeah. Now you know why Thursday nights are so busy. It's oh, our absolutely. prime rib night. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is so tasty. Thank you guys so much for having America's Best Restaurants here today. Well guys, we just had a really phenomenal time here at the Carriage House and I mean, everything was just absolutely awesome. And I really loved hearing about this history of this building that's been around since literally before the Civil War. Even saw myself an apparition or two, okay? I mean, this place is absolutely legit. The food was fire and the people were awesome. I loved hearing about Sharon's story of perseverance and she became owner of this awesome place. With that said, unfortunately, it's time to keep it pushing. I'm Theo Williams for America's Best Restaurants. Hope to see you.